Hey everyone, this is Daniel, and in today's video, we're going to talk about how to build a quiz in Microsoft Teams. Now, this is a continuation of my previous video, the one I released last week, which is how to build a quiz in Microsoft Forms. And we're going to take everything we learned over there and apply it in Microsoft Teams. But since it's Teams, things are a little bit different. So I'm going to walk you through the differences step by step and in the process, teach you some tips and tricks. So stick around. But first, here's my intro video. So let's get started. Now this is where we left off in my last video is where we went ahead and created this quiz directly on Microsoft Forms. Now one of the interesting things is that if you've already got a quiz like I've created and you want to go ahead and use that into Teams, you don't have to build it from scratch or you don't even have to do any import or anything like that. You as a individual maker of this form can or the quiz can go and take it and directly share it in any of the teams inside Microsoft Teams. And that's actually the first quiz, because remember I was going to tell you, I'll share some tidbits. That's the first one, is that you can take any of the form, as long as it is your personal one, that gives you the flexibility to take it and share that in any one of the teams. And I'll show you an example. I'm gonna go ahead and now jump into my Microsoft Teams, and I am an individual of all of these team members, all right? So I'm gonna now say, there's one that I, the, the form that I built about me, I'm gonna go ahead and put that into this Teams called the company Teams, where pretty much everybody in the company has access to. And so for that, I'll come over here to the plus, I'll go ahead and search for Microsoft Forms. Microsoft Forms has to be one of the apps for your Microsoft Teams, so keep that in mind. When I click on Microsoft Forms, it will come up and it'll give me an option whether you wanna create a new one or you wanna add an existing form. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on add an existing form and that's the one, say, what do you know about Daniel? Do you notice that right beside it, there is a personal inside the parenthesis? That is telling you that, hey, that form that you're filling is a personal form that you built, you're the maker of it, and it hasn't been shared with the group. It's a very key information for you to find out over there. And because it's personal and I'm the one putting it, I can go and select it. I can either select the option to post it to the channel or not. And I'll go ahead and go ahead and click on save. Once I do the save, it gets put up on this tab over here. And so if I were to go and now pretend like I'm logging in as somebody else, which is Finn, he comes into his channel, I'll just go and refresh it. And actually it already showed up over there, just, it's refreshing. But right up over there, you see that new uh, tag, that tag shows that, hey, a form was filled up over there. And once he's in, you see the option for that Microsoft form. It's actually a new form. So I'll go and click on that. And here is the form that I have built, the one which I personally have access to. So I can go and fill this up, say, yep, Daniel is a father. Um, age, I can go and select the age, I can go and select, you know, put some number, basically just get all of this information in. Um, yeah, whatever, I'll submit that. And the data goes through. Now the important thing over here is that it was your personal quiz, so its data now stores inside Microsoft Forms. That's where your data is gonna be stored. And just to show that, it will be come back over here into, as me, who's the creator of the form, I go into Microsoft Forms, and when I go into my forms, I'll click on the form that I have, and over here, I'll be able to see my new entry, all right? That's where my new entry, which was created. It's staying inside my, my forms, inside the Microsoft Forms. So that was the first example, is that I already have a quiz created. I'm gonna go ahead and now just display that quiz inside Microsoft Teams, because that's the only way you can do it, is create that quiz inside Microsoft Teams. Now let's do a second thing, is let me first try to build a quiz directly inside Microsoft Teams. And let's see if that's even possible, all right? So I'm gonna come now into my Microsoft Teams and I've got this team over here called Forms, Quizzes, and uh, Surveys and Forms, Surveys and Quizzes. So over here now, I'm going to attempt now to create my quiz. So I'll come back now over here to the plus, I'm gonna select Microsoft Forms. And when I select Microsoft Forms, I'm gonna go ahead and now create my quiz over here. So I'll keep it to the first option, which is create a shared form that your team can edit and see results. So I'll say first quiz um, by team. I'll go ahead and do that. Now, if you remember from the previous video, in Microsoft Forms, when you're creating a quiz, you actually have the option to select it as a quiz. And here's what it is. I come in now, I wanna go and create a form. Oh, instead of a quiz, I'll go and create a quiz and I select the drop down click and click on new quiz. Well, I'm not seeing that over here in Microsoft Forms inside Teams. So I'm gonna to try to create it and let's see if I can find something else over there. By the way, there's checkbox. If you click on that checkbox, 
um, it will, if you leave it as this, it will go ahead and show it as a comment in a conversation. But if you take it off, it won't add it over there. So that's a little tidbit because sometimes you don't always need it, but just thought I'll let you know that. So now I'm going to go and click on save. And you notice this is where the option to edit together comes in because everybody in this Teams is going to edit together. But I still didn't get an option to create a quiz. So my first tidbit for me to really identify if this is a quiz type functionality is I come into plus new, I'll go ahead and add choice. And if this is how I think it is for each of these options that you see over here, I should see the ability to go ahead and put in a comment. I still see that trash can and the ability to select the correct answer. But if I have a mouse over here, all I see is the trash can. That's it. No option to select apparent comment, no option to select the correct answer. So here is a proof for you is that you cannot build a quiz inside Microsoft Teams using Microsoft Forms. All of that has to be done outside in Microsoft Forms over there. And so how do I do that, all right? One of the things you wanna do is first, I'm gonna go and delete this off, remove it so we don't get any confused. Yep, I'll go and remove that. Is I'm gonna go back now into my Microsoft Forms and over here, you can actually start building a quiz or you can just build a dummy quiz. And then once you've done that, go ahead and import it into that same group, which is tied to that Microsoft Teams. So let me show you what that is. All right, so I'm gonna come out again. So one of the things is when you click on Microsoft Forms, it always opens up another browser tab. It does get a little bit annoying. Cool, so right here is where I've gone ahead and actually built the original quiz, all right? So I'm gonna come out to that original quiz just to make sure, yep, that's that original quiz. Now, if I were to go back in and I wanna go back to all my forms, see, opened up another tab. Here is the trick. Your quiz, you now need to move it inside that group. And to do that, you click on these ellipses, which is a three dot, and it says you wanna move. Where do you wanna move it? You wanna move it into that destination, which is that group, which is actually that Teams. So now I'll go and click on that, and I'll go and say move, all right? So it's moving it. It's already moved it. It went ahead and told me, hey, your form has been moved. We're all good. To verify that, now I can actually go into, if I go to all my forms, I don't see you know, the one that we created. I just don't see it. What I do see is now if I actually go back outside, I'm gonna close this one. If I go now to my groups, in my groups, I select this one, the group which I actually moved it to, and there you go. It actually moved it over there. Another interesting thing is it even moved all the responses that you had, which you, previous responses, it even moves over there. It's a very interesting idea to know, all right? So we've gone and moved over there. Now, when I go into my Microsoft Teams for that team, I can come in over here to plus, I can go select Microsoft Forms. In my Microsoft Forms, I can do both. I can go ahead and now add an existing form and see what do you know about Daniel? It doesn't have that personal uh, and the parentheses over here. When I select it, I can go and say, hey, no, we are going to collaborate together. See, that third option shows up. So now I can go and do that. I'll save it. In fact, on the top, you will see the new option for edit. It's a little different. And over here, everybody inside this team has the option to go in and collaborate together. So you can click on it, you can modify all those answers and do all of that. And voila, over here, when I click on it, it shows me the trash can, the comment area, and the correct answer. So this is now successfully and a legitimate quiz we are building inside Microsoft Teams using Microsoft Forms. Now, here is where things get a little bit more interesting and a little bit more confusing too. So let's think about this. We went ahead and now got the forms, I mean the quiz in. I've also gone ahead and imported it into the group. We are editing, basically co-authoring it together. So if I were to now save this form and allow people to start using it, um, where does the data store? Because it's part of the group. So my immediate thinking would be as well, the data will be just an Excel spreadsheet that is generated and stored in the document library of that SharePoint site in the backend of this SharePoint, I mean this Teams. But that's not how it works because it is always tied to the original location of where it was built, which in this case was a quiz that you built in Microsoft Forms. So the data for this quiz is still gonna stay inside Microsoft Forms. And to prove that to you, I'm gonna show you two examples. One is now I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to actually click on the forms. And we're gonna now put it in such that we're gonna add it. So I'm gonna add that existing form. This is the one. I'll go and say I'm gonna collect the responses and I'll uncheck that box. I'm gonna say yes. We have another tab show up over here and I'm gonna go now fill it, all right? So I'm gonna say um, husband, or actually it's a husband, father, um, age, um, the age, say the 200, 
just fill up basically some information and everything is good. So I'll go ahead and I'll click on submit. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and check on the SharePoint list in the back end. Because if this was originally created inside Teams, then it generates an Excel spreadsheet. So let's go to the files. And in the files, I actually see these spreadsheets, but they were not for the form that we had. Our form name was What Do You Know About Daniel? Just to be on the safe side, I'm going outside to documents and I don't see any other folder. It's basically always inside general. So here's the proof is that because we originally, the inception of this quiz was inside Microsoft Forms, all the data also will be stored in Microsoft Forms. So when we go back over here, um, I won't find, I'm inside Microsoft Forms, I don't find that form over here, all right? I just don't find it inside my forms. I go to all my forms and I don't see, like the form name is, what do you know about Daniel? It's not inside my, my forms. What it is, is it's, it's inside the groups. So when I go out to the groups, I would go outside and then I go and look at the my groups. I click on my groups. Over there, I actually see the form. And when I go and click on the form, that is where you are able to go ahead and gather all the responses because the data is sitting inside Microsoft Forms, not in the other scenario where it would be in Teams. And just to show that as an example, if I were to go and create it, you know, go to Teams, I'm going into Teams and I'll see, you know, just try to randomly create another form, um, which in this case will only be a form. It won't be a quiz. I'll just randomly create one. Uh, testing to prove a point. I'll click on save. I'll just randomly put in something, all right? There, there. I'll question one, option one and two. All right, everything is good. I'll go ahead and now even say, I'm gonna show that form, all right? Quickly get that done. Get that form, add an existing one, test to prove a point, save it. Form shows up over here. I'll click on option one, submit it. Now when I go to files, I will see test to prove a point. That got generated inside the Microsoft Forms in the backend SharePoint list. But that one, I will still see it in my Microsoft Forms. Why? Because when I go to Microsoft Forms, I can always go to the one which is my groups. When I click on my groups, I can go and see the forms that have been created even by me in the groups. The only difference is the data it gets stored in Shared, inside the SharePoint um, document library. I know, I know that does get a little bit confusing at a time. So just keep in mind that when it comes to quizzes, no matter where you've saved it, it always just the data of it goes ahead and saves it inside the SharePoint, um, inside the Microsoft Forms. It doesn't save it in the SharePoint library. Now, the last thing I want to show you is this one important permissions thing that you need to be aware of. All right, so we went ahead and, you know, we created the quiz in Microsoft Forms. We went and imported into the group, which is Forms, Surveys, and Quizzes. It now, go, I can go ahead and you know, add it as an edit to co-author it together or to fill it. I can do it all inside this one. But do I have that same flexibility where in previously I could go ahead and come into general, you know, in, in, in previously when I was, the form was a personal form sitting inside uh, my forms over there, which was actually was a quiz, which was a personal quiz sitting inside the uh, forms. That one, I could go ahead and add it over here. I could actually come in, click on it, and you know, what do you know about Daniel? Well, I've gone ahead and now moved that form, I mean that quiz into this group. So can I find it over here? Well, let's go see. So I click on the plus, click on Microsoft Forms, and over here, I am going to add an existing form and I'm going to search for what do you know about Daniel, right? And guess what? I cannot find it. So that's a big lesson that you've learned is that once a form has been, your quiz has been moved into a group, only that group has access to it. So keep in mind that if you are creating a quiz, if you're going to share it with everyone, you better leave it as a personal one for yourself because you share, the moment you share it in a team, only the people in that team have access to it. So it's a very important thing that you want to understand about that. And finally, I have one more thing to tell you is that, all right, you went ahead and created a quiz. Now you've gone ahead and you know, imported that inside a group. How do I get it back as a personal quiz so that I can you know, do some more manipulation or tweaking? Well, how do I do that? Because now when you go back and sit into your own, you know, your forms, you don't see your quiz over there anymore. Everything that you do, everybody else will have access to it. So Daniel, how do I solve that problem? I'll show you a trick. Now I've gone back into my Microsoft Forms. I'm going into my groups. Here is the group that I have 
imported my quiz in. That's the quiz. What I'll do over here is I'll click on it so I can go into the quiz. And when I click on share, I'm gonna go ahead and say share as a template. So I'll go ahead and click on that. It will generate a link. I'll copy that. I'll just open up another tab. I'll paste it. And the moment I do that, it says duplicate this form to use as your own. I'm gonna duplicate it. And that duplicated form, which in this case is a quiz, that is the one that gets moved into your personal form. So I'll show you what that means. When I go back over here now, I can click on that, go to my forms. And when I go to my forms, that is where you see specifically yours. And just to prove that point, I'm gonna go into my forms, but here, all my forms. When I go to all my forms, this is the one that you copied, see? That is how you're able to get your quiz back and take it for yourself. And even though, even though you have the original one shared in the group, this is how you can go and get a copy of your original quiz, something that only you have access to. So wow, we covered a ton of things about Microsoft Forms and also moving it back and forth between the forms and the teams and the forms and the teams. And all of this was about quiz. So as a quick recap, everything that you have to do with the quiz has originally have to be done inside Microsoft Forms. That is the inception place of a quiz. Then once you build a quiz, you've got two options. You go ahead and actually build a quiz and you as your personal quiz, you can share it across any of the teams inside Microsoft Teams. But if you've gone ahead and now shared it for co-authoring purposes inside another Microsoft Teams, you actually have to go ahead and import that, add that into that group. But once you did that, only the people in that Teams, which is that group, they are the only ones who have access to go ahead and edit it or even submit it. And finally, if you wanna go ahead and now make yourself as the individual owner, just the personal owner, then you wanna go ahead and actually clone it or copy that original quiz, getting that link, then you will get another copy of it, which only you have access to, the personal one. So all of this was a lot of information. Hopefully this was helpful to you. And as always, keep using Microsoft Forms. Thank you so much for watching my YouTube video. Remember, this is all free with fresh content that is updated on a weekly basis. So if you've already subscribed to my channel, Thank you and spread the word. If you haven't already, subscribe, click on the bell notification and let the learning begin.